uh, these rappers, we don't see much beefs that are even productive. The last beef song that was actually like a beef song was Kitty Kids this to half of the industry yeah. and they didn't even respond. Welcome back to yet another episode of Off The Record with myself, Sean Angava, Vananda Namapapi, Michael Kayunde. Yep. Um, we do realize that we took a very long production break, but then we are back again uh, to talk about essential topics within the entertainment industry. Talking about uh, essential topics, <laughs> how are you guys doing? We're good, it's, man. It's um, feeling good, looking good. What can I say, man? Cotton on came through. Yeah, <laughs> we're at Tatekulu. Everything so, yeah. new. Everything man. is, is yeah. only within our means. Yes, this is actually means. why we had to take a break, because we had to get the business right. So, you know, yeah. everything, is, everything is right. Okay, talking about things that are right, I want us to focus on things that were right for the hip hop movement, since this is an, an episode focused on hip hop only. Mm -hmm. um, DJ Dreya started, of course, the Five Minute Finesse, which was a you know, I think it's a rap battle with rappers on their own on a five minute beat, basically, yeah. basically just going against the beat. It was a very cool initiative, um, cool idea for uh, that's the start of uh, lockdown when we went into lockdown or when Namibia went into lockdown. Mm -hmm. taking, a, taking a look back at the platform and what it did for hip hop, what can you guys uh, look, look back in terms of what DJD has achieved with it? Um, I believe it brought the country together and it brought hip hop artists together on one platform but you know hip hop artists don't like working together but we'll get to that um the the, the best part about it or one of my favorite parts about it is that you saw you know guys from Kitmas, guys from Rehoboth, guys from the coast valfers from Rundu, for them even katima let me not say even but katima as well from everywhere in the country literally everywhere they came on the show so you, to this day, I, I, I struggle to mention three artists from Kitmans, which is a bad thing, by the way. Um, Kitmans only maybe, has maybe S, on they part, only have S men. Yeah. <laughs> from the new crop of artists, you see. So I was good to see artists from all over the country. Yeah, um, I really like the platform. Uh, it gave, you know, a lot of upcoming artists, you know, that exposure for them to, you know, reach a lot of people because DJ Dreas has, you know, a bigger reach on, um, on, on social media. However, I'm disappointed in the artists that came on the platform mm -hmm. because I feel like, you know, they were given this, you know, great initiative, great reach, but who do we know that is successful right now that was, you know, on... Uh, on five minute finesse so that's my beef i feel like he gave them the platform but they didn't you know take it and you know use it for, for use like it for full, for full exposure yeah now dj drias went into a break after he brought or like he mentioned that he was going to bring in south african artists yeah twitter Which didn't did. like it social yeah. media did not like it and somewhat for some reason he got bullied into not <laughs> doing <laughs> his show bullied, so he yeah. took he took a break right <laughs> yeah mm. yeah taking a look back at that move from DJ Drias, do you feel like it was the right move for him to bring in all these artists, Bosiswa, Focalistic? He brought in a lot of South African artists to the show, yeah. and most of them were not even hip-hop artists. I think now that we are all producers, I think we kind of know that sometimes <laughs> you need to step back, reevaluate. So I think it was dead for him as well, just to see the response from the people if he took a break, because Sometimes you need to take a break to see whether there's actually demand and there was demand. But one of the reasons people were also complaining because of the international artists were the fact that they would come on the show, stay on the show for 25 minutes, whereas the Namibian rappers would come on for five minutes mm. only. So I think that was kind of one of the issues. But people loved the fact that there were international artists on. It's just, you know, the time. And um, the other thing was... Um, yeah, these guys would come on for 25 minutes, but they amplified the show, you know. Mm. People complained, but still, you know, five minute finesse, these Namibian rappers got to be seen by South African audience and the Sadiq audience. Pardon? I, um, I think Namibians were not ready for that type of growth. Um, as DJ Drias himself, he probably just wanted, you know, to tap into other markets. But Namibians wanted to really, you know, make that platform about them mm. at that particular time. I don't think they were ready for, to, you know, to embrace or put on other uh, international acts already at that time because there was still it was still a new platform. So there were still a lot of artists that needed to still make use of that platform before he got... Um, outside you know artists so Thanks. the platform was pretty much very good for dj Drias himself yeah because he i think he got a few international gigs after he started the show mm -hmm. but if he if he decides he wants to bring back the show today 
will it still have the same impact as it did during the first round of the show? I know there are people looking out for what Trez, what Trez is always doing, you know, whether he posts like a poll or something short, people are always engaged, whether it's a release, people are always engaged. So I think if he comes back with five minute finesse, it has to take a different format, maybe take it on radio or on TV or on YouTube, but I don't think it will, Instagram live will do because pe people cannot stay up, up, up until 12 a.m. or 12 p.m., 12 a.m., mm. yeah, anymore, so, so that too. I think he has to take a different format. What do you think, Mike? Uh, I'm not really sure if, you know, if people want you know, that to happen again. But you know, he's a very creative person. So I just want him to, if he does come back, he, he just needs to take a different approach, make it more creative, and we are good to go. Yes, All right, sir. so five minute finish. If you've watched it, if you heard of it, what are some of your great memories of five minute finish? And like, would you like to see them come back? Basically, that's what I'm asking uh, the yeah. people watching right now. We move from a very positive movement in hip hop that was, you know, well received by a lot of people. And now we are moving to We Are Hip Hop <laughs> Namibia, which is also a movement which was started by Cannibal and a few other rappers to amplify the hip hop scene mm -hmm. and to unite the industry and as well as to just build the industry. They had a lot of ideas that they wanted to do, more collaborations, videos, and stuff like that, of mm. that sort. But yeah. I feel like right now it's become a platform where people go and mm. just have digital beef. Yeah, it has just become uh, a platform for beta rappers for me. That's how I look at it. It's like <laughs> the industry rappers. gatekeepers. Yeah, you know, so it's, if you're on that platform, you know you are better, no, better rapper according to... Not necessarily, to... <laughs> not necessarily. I just feel like the ones that are more vocal on that platform yeah. are the rappers who actually never go to, you know, enjoy commercial success. Mm -hmm. And right now they are not really happy with, the, you know, seeing the people that they deem not so talented than them eating from, you know, maybe having to start the, the hip hop movement in the country, yeah, you know, thanks. so for me, it's, it's really a negative platform because we want to build, you know, our industry. And if we have such a platform with over, I think, 14,000 uh, yeah, people yes. and all of that is just about negative energy and not us bringing ourselves together and collaborating, it's, it's really serving I no mean, purpose to the game. They yeah. did try and do a few things. They had uh, Cannibal and, and Jericho. Jericho uh, yeah, that was versus. actually nice. And yeah, they, they need to do something like that. They need to keep up with, with the trends. And I, Even when they did that, I think they did that like towards the end of the year uh, when verses were actually, you know, still going out of fashion. No, they were going out of fashion. So why did they have to wait until then? So, and they also, they just need to be creative themselves. Like, let's see uh, um, an initiative that was started by that platform that is not you know, anywhere else in the country mm, exactly. or the world. The verses was, you know, started in the States. So it was not an or original idea from them. So I need them to, you know, be really be creative with but their own things. it was still a cool thing though. And it did great numbers. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah the verses yeah. did very great yeah. numbers, but the platform itself, I don't want to dwell on the negative. I feel like when it started, <laughs> when it started, it was a very great platform to go and recognize or to go and discover new hip hop talent. Not so much anymore, because I feel yeah. like there are just a lot of rappers who used to be a thing back in the day who go onto the platform and they act like they are the OGs and they've started the industry. Yeah. But, you know, the industry has already moved on from some of these rappers. Exactly. exactly so that's yeah. just uh, the topic on We Are Hip Hop Namibia, right? Yeah. Um, now I want us to move on to an industry highlight for 2021. I feel like that's the biggest success that a hip hop artist had so far for the year. Um, Cassidy has, you know, signed a, is it an endorsement deal with MTC, MTC and the Namibia Football Cup, yeah. Association, NFA, mm -hmm. if I'm corrected there. Yeah. Um, what, 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 where does this propel the industry in, like in terms of hip hop culture? Um, it's, I feel like it's a win for the industry or for the hip hop industry in particular, because Cassidy, as we know it, is one of the artists who has invested in fashion, you know, mm. and we have seen in the last few years how he has been dressing, you know, hip hop music videos and stuff like that. So I have no doubt that some of that money he's going to invest in his uh, fashion house. And, you know, like I said, this fashion house has been, you know, styling hip music videos for like hip hop artists. So that is also a way of him adding value to, to, to our industry. So it's, doesn't I like it. Doesn't man. he mostly dress his friends though? 
Uh, no man, I don't think. Sally is friend because you also dressed Sally for me. I, mean, yeah, I, I yeah, think they're sure. cool. I think they're cool. <laughs> obviously, obviously. <laughs> I think they're cool. You okay, can't just you can you can't force certain things, man. Obviously, you. And most importantly, cool it's with. it's just because I'm just happy because one of us is actually you know getting something. Yeah. I think hip hop is like the stepchild of the industry. So when deals of this nature always happen, it's always artists from the other genres who get exactly. them. So the fact that it's someone from our culture. I'm all for that. Man. And then what do you think of the, of, the, of the deal? I think from a corporate standpoint, it's good for hip hop because... Why do you guys say it's good for hip hop? Because it's one of um, us who's eating. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Because yeah. now corporates will also look at hip hop artists on the say, okay, uh, this genre or these group of artists are also as influential to get deals, you know. Before Cassidy, before KP, before the who's and who's that are running hip hop now, Got deals. They were hip hop artists were not getting as many deals as the artists from other genres. So now uh, corporates and and sponsors will look at hip hop artists to so say they have the influence. Kendrick's Kendrick's deal with Top Score is 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 that is that is that also good for hip hop? Uh, to a certain extent. No, man. I don't think so. Um, think <laughs> so you guys extent. are making an exception for for Kesedi, but you won't make an exception for Gedrich. What's the difference? They are both rappers, different lanes, but they are both rappers. I don't see Gedrich as a professional rapper. I, I thought initially he was a comedian. That's what I thought. I thought he was a comedian. No, no, no. no the guy is serious. He's, about he's a musician. Yeah. I mean, Gedrich. Yeah. Gedrich's yeah. hooks are always on point. I, 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 I can't talk <laughs> on his raps, but his hooks. Whoever he gets on his hooks are always good. And there's, the, there's actually one music video which was like you know very crisp. So I'm like, I. Guy is rolling with Indians and he's rolling with Muslims like, in his the videos. The music must, might be you know funny and stuff like that, but I think like. He thinks and believes he's like the greatest. So I'm asking here. you guys. Because I initially thought he was a parody artist. That's why I don't yeah, consider him a hip hop artist. But I'm asking no. in terms of he does hip hop music. Let's yeah. let's let's mm -hmm. get that out of the way. I'm asking in terms of his endorsement deal. Is that good for the industry? Yes or no? He, yeah, I guess. It is I guess good, it shows man. that everybody can about, get a deal. I'm all about people <laughs> from my culture eating. So if someone from my culture is eating, I'm always gonna you know upload that because I think Namibia is also getting to the point where our own artists are getting these endorsements. Mm. You know, back in the days you would, you know, be, you know, in town or whatever, and then you see billboards of international faces and stuff like that. But now brands are actually using Namibian entertainers. And for me, that's all I'm about. I just, I, I just feel like, uh, sorry, man, I just feel like um, this deal, it's good for him and it shows that anybody can get a deal, even if you're not as good at rapping, as long as you have a following or as long as you have some sort of mm. audience behind you, you can get a deal. I don't feel like they endorsed him for his great rapping skills. I don't feel like people that follow him, follow him for his great rapping skills or whatever sort of talent. No but offense though. Hon honorable mention, <laughs> just an honorable mention, um, um, KPLS I think scored a deal with uh, a Black Label yeah. and Predator. No, no, not just the, the, oh, the current, the, recent, recent, yeah, the, recent, the think, most recent deal is Castellite and, and Black, Label. Black Label. Yeah, yeah. yeah. he's doing some promo for them as well. Yeah. So these are both very big um, endorsements for the industry. I guess this deal actually comes with a lot more goodies. Yeah. Um, his music is going to be played at uh, the games, mm. soccer games that are going to be aired possibly on TV as well, the radio. So he's going to be all over the country with yeah. his music being promoted, you know. Yeah. So that's always a good move for, for the industry. So if you're watching, do you think um, our artists getting endorsements helps their brands, helps them advance, or is it just us talking crap while we are here? <laughs> um, we are talking about the Cassidy's and the KPE list and all these artists, right? Yeah. But I want to take it back a bit to the golden era of Namibian hip hop when the industry you know was very much well regarded when the rappers were loved when we, we when we heard their music mm. in, in 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 the streets everywhere that's from i believe 2007 to 2012 the yeah. jerichos the cannibals paradoxes 061 music. slammers 061 music DJ, the late KD Cat, dj all these guys were popping yeah and you know they dice. the music was a big deal even dice yeah Let's compare that legacy to the current legacy. Why aren't our artists as, like our hip hop artists, as impactful as it was back then? Because I was from Hobbabes, but I was screaming 061 stand up or Vintuk stand up. I think but we don't have that right now. What's, 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 what, where is the problem? 
I think they managed to, you know, crack the, the formula of making music that could cross over and be enjoyed by other music fans from other genres. You know, back in the days, hip hop was such a big thing that if you are an event organizer and you know you are putting putting on a show, you need to make sure that an artist from the hip hop space is on the lineup. Right now, you know, you can have a show and you know maybe say i'm not gonna have a hip-hop artist mm. on there and it's not really gonna be a thing but imagine you know when corner came out and you have an event out and cannibal is not on the on the lineup it's crazy it's yeah. not gonna make it sense, sense at all you know? yeah i think for the current crop of artists the good thing for them is that they have social media mm. but it's also a bad thing and i'll get to that the good thing is that social media social media makes these guys very lazy also <laughs> very also. lazy they are very lazy also and um, the, f uh, the reason why is that, you know, they can see whatever genre is popping internationally and experiment with it. Back then, guys were only, you know, mostly doing kind of a Namibian sound or hip hop that was uh, mixed with sounds that are already popular in Namibia. That's why it was also relatable, more relatable back then than compared to these artists now, because um, a kid now will make a, a drill beat or um, whatever, you know, crime or what, whatever trap that's, that's trending, and then my uncle won't relate to it, you know? But again, the, the good thing is they are, they're keeping up, they're always, they, it's easier for them compared to the guys from the golden era to go international because um, they have that international appeal, they have that international sound right now. Um, one contrasting thing that I realized from a long time ago is that, um, the first crop of rappers, right? Uh. They were doing remixes, they were all buddy-buddy, they were all working together. Mm. We don't see that with the current crop. They don't really socialize with one another, they don't really work with one another. And if they do, it's normally just a very small circle of friends who are yeah. together. So yeah. how do we get our artists to work together? Do you call them up? Like this, this is our artists themselves. Do they call <laughs> each other up like, yo, I got this one that I need to work on? Like, I, I, I really believe you know, collaboration should be organic. Mm, so yeah. if these kids are not really messing with each other, let's not force them, you know? I think, you know, with time, it's just going to happen organically. And uh, let's not force that thing of, you know, back in the days, this is how things were done. And let, let's also stick to that now. I think it's different times. And if these kids are not getting along, you know, let's not put them together because I also believe we need to have beef that is going to benefit the industry. I don't, you know, believe um, hip hop in Namibia has had beef that has elevated the game to the next level. Because for me, beef is supposed to be that one element of hip hop that also adds to how creative an artist is. Quality. You, quality, you know, because beef is going to make an artist go to studio and think of the craziest line. You know, and right now, which hip hop beef do you think has really done that for the game? I have, I have a story. I on think the last one that had attention was Script and Guy. That was, that wasn't really beef because Script didn't want to entertain it. Exactly. Guy was talking to his phone, basically. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't really entertained, so it was just yeah. a very boring beef. To, to, to be very honest with you, talking about Guy, Guy orchestrates his beefs in a very weird way. There was a time that him and Kwame Sankara were actually beefing. Why is he beefing with Kwame Sankara? They, they, were, they were beefing over who owns the, the <laughs> genre, Overtrap. Oh, Overtrap. Yeah. So he slides into my DMs, and I think I do have like a DM from him on Facebook. Yeah. And he's like, yo, we're trying to orchestrate this beef. Please come through for us. <laughs> That's how they do it. That's how they do it. Yeah, yeah so, but the thing is, you know, we just need to make sure that if we are going to have beef, the beef is going to, the beef must be able to grow the industry. Look at Dog and Gaza, not, you know, to, to move away from, to, to move away from that. But we know that that beef, to a certain extent, elevated the quality of music they made and also just exposed them to different kinds of market. Even if you take it internationally, Casper and AKA, the same thing um, in the States, Biggie and, you know, Park. Mm. So we need that for, for hip hop as well. So if we're just out here beefing and the beef is not forcing artists to, to make good music, forcing artists to expand just, their Just their to end of the topic, right? Just nah. to end of the topic. Why would I, as KP Illust, if I have all these endorsements with all these other brands, mm. if potentially a beef could end those 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 endorsements or put you know a, a strain or a stain on those on on those endorsements why would i want to be with anyone 
it's it's hip hop culture. It's hip hop culture. But, I mean, but then I'm corporate right now. Like like beefs are you can do it both ways. You can either name drop, talk your nonsense, or you can drop subliminals. These rappers they barely do subliminals. The most they do is talk about behind each other's backs, and I've seen this. Like they talk, <laughs> know this thing. They talk about each behind each other's backs, but they would never jump on a song and say this and this and yeah, that. That's yeah. that's the one thing. Uh, these rappers, we don't see much beefs that are even productive. The last beef song that was actually like a beef song was Skitty Kids this to half of the industry. Yeah. They didn't even respond. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's just put an end to this topic. Yeah. And I want to ask people at home watching this, if you have some you know, relative memories of um, your favorite old school hip hop songs, let us know. And what are some of your recent beefs or like beefs that you, that you can recall within hip hop that Made, that had you know, pay that had you pay attention to hip hop. So mm -hmm. just let yeah. us know in the comment section what some of those um, uh, topics are that I just mentioned now. Um, let's move on real quick, gentlemen. Just brief. Mm. Who are your top five artists? Um, should I go hip hop? First? Okay, uh, I think it's off the record. So let's just you know tell it like it is. Um, in no me, particular <laughs> order. Just no, give in, us no, give us an order. order. I'm oh, giving okay. you my particular in order. Particular, yeah, one in particular, one to five. Yeah, one to <laughs> five. So at number one, I, I have to have Elia Da Vinci there. Um, you mentioned Elia in R and B last episode. I'm, listen, listen, <laughs> listen, listen, and I'll so, explain this. Okay, I'll okay. explain this. He dropped an album last year, which. You know, I think it's a concept album. Mm. Um, he he's singing, but he's also he rapping does on it. And he's created everything. Exactly. So yeah. he does everything, and he does the rapping so well. Like I listen to his music more than you know anybody else right at yeah. the moment. So that's why I have him at number one. And I've watched him perform live. The guy is amazing, bro. Mm. So number two, I will have to have Linus on there. I feel like, you know, consistency, she's always, you know, putting in the work. The work ethic is there. The work rate is crazy. Visually, she always kills the game. Yeah. At number three, I will have to put Cassidy on there. Um, he's the reigning hip hop artist. He's the, the reigning hip hop artist of the year. Recently backed uh, uh, the MTC deal. Besides that, he's also big on fashion, so I respect that. At number four, I will have to put MIG on there. They are, you know, really being consistent, consistent with their music right now. Because last day, I feel like, you know, they actually deprived us because they only dropped one song, I think, mm. even though that song really, you know, ran throughout the year. But I like the and fact they're that... they're actually killing it in the views department as well. You know, it's I like the are, fact that... It, they're averaging 100,000 right now. Yeah, like, I, I think they dropped Tingolo in, like, February or March. February. Yeah, and it's about to hit Almost 300k three now yeah. and then they followed it up with go down which is over 100k now i have to respect Please. that mm. you know and then number five i will have to put script there so that's my top five all right yeah. decent <laughs> um i would go with line as at number one complete package consistent she uh, she's she's making all the other women in rap look so bad because she, she's way far more consistent than the rest of them and no offense to the ladies but Y'all are not putting in the work. Karishma is doing okay. Five singles in the last two years, about five. Uh, two singles this year. Yeah. So far, so she's, with visual, she, so she's pushing now. Yeah. Uh, but everybody else, I don't, I don't see competitiveness. Same with hip hop. Uh, same with the the gents as well. The consistency is a thing in hip hop. But yeah, I just wanted to put that out there. Um, Linus, of course. Cassidy. Great album, reigning hip hop artist of the year. You know, fusing his fashion with his his talent, and um, that's that's two. Number three, I gotta go with Ngai, Ovi Trap originator. Although Kame Sankara would back to differ, <laughs> <laughs> would back to differ. Um, um, all round great artist, great rapper. You know, when it comes to buzz, it's not only the one. Him and Kev, I would say, when it comes to hooks, some of the best hooks in the industry. Um, that's three. Script, okay. great lyricist, but versatility, you know, he can, he, he's still getting there. But lyricist, when it comes to lyricism, I think he's number one in the country. And at number five, I would say Kevo Maro. He is leading when it comes to the crop of artists that he started with. You know, the Lionesses, the Cassidy's, the KP's, they yeah. are. They started before him, but, you know, Kevo, Slime, KZ, you know, these kids started after them. So from that group of artists, I, I believe Kevo is ahead of them and way more consistent even.
That's, right. that's your top five right now. Yeah, yeah, right now. So it can change next week. It, it, it can it can change before this one, you know, Maybe before this episode comes year, out. You should but, come yeah. up with something like a whole list. Yeah, like top a top 10, top 10 or something. Yeah. But at the moment, that's actually my top five. Your top five? No, I can't give my top five. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm supposed to be like the objective. I think the, 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 the internet would be very happy with both your, <laughs> <laughs> both okay, your lists. Okay, good enough. Um, so yeah. um, in terms of hip hop, what are your projections for the year? So we can just end off the, the show. What are your projections for the year? What do you expect from hip hop artists? Um, I see a lot of artists, you know, putting uh, out songs that are going to be complemented with visuals. Mm. I think uh, they have really realized the importance of, you know, making sure that songs have music videos. So, and I want to see how, you know, they can tell stories visually because music videos are very important in you know building a brand and it also shows us how an artist can get creative when it comes to just telling their their songs differently mm. you know so mm. i i look forward to a lot of visuals from I look forward to a lot of beef, but this industry is so boring. I, I want, I want hip hop. I mean, I think, I think yeah, that's, 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 that's the problem I have with yeah, rappers. Put it on the yeah. songs, man. Like every rapper in this industry has told me something about about another, ab yeah. about another person, and most of these people are people yeah. that they are very close to. Yeah. Put it in the song, and if, if you are being called out, if you are being called out by another rapper, don't shy away from it. I'm talking don't to you, KP. I'm talking to KP. I'm talking to Scrub. Okay. Let's beef. Okay. Make okay. the industry okay. interesting. Okay. Let's make the industry. Yeah. Interesting, man. And exciting, man. True. We really need, you know, that to happen. Not just KP, yeah. like also you, um, TK the rapper. Anybody <laughs> else? Anybody else being mentioned in songs? Take no, beefing. TK the rapper is only beefing with the followers or his followers on Twitter. Now he's only beefing with Nam Twitter, but I don't think there are rappers that mm. are coming for him. Mm. And there's I think a, he's utilizing Nam there's Twitter. There's a lot of rappers that came for There's a lot of the rappers that came for TK the rapper. Okay, TK. Like, uh, like uh, the whole of Nas rappers, you. like Nas rappers, all of them. Mm. So what are your projections before? Um, hey show? man, apart from the visuals, I don't see these guys being consistent. I don't see them. That's sad though. It is what it is. Prove me wrong. <laughs> that's that's what I want to see. Prove me yeah. wrong. But I don't see them, you know, dropping great albums and pushing these albums. I don't see them trying to take it international. Mm. You know. So prove me wrong, man. That's all I'm saying. So be consistent. Try to go international. More visuals and do work on the ground. Get off social media. Do work on the just, ground. Just, just, just so that, like my five, my, my like my five minute, what is it? Fifteen minutes of fame. All you rappers who are always <laughs> saying that female these, female that, there are female rappers in the industry. Be very afraid of charisma. Be very afraid of lioness. MBK. MBK. All those rappers can wash you any day. Even Straight with up. the female title, they can wash you any day. And let's also I'm just tired go of, away with that. Female, I'm tired of that, that title. Yeah. Yeah. Man, the, let's just see them for who they are. Let's not, you know, put them as that, in, in that, that box, yeah, in that box. All right, so gentlemen, uh, that finally brings the show to an end. Uh, I hope we don't get into much trouble over what we said. Yeah. But with that if said, a name drops me in a so I won't mind. I'll just you know, <laughs> go ahead. With, with that said, with that said, um, if you have any top five rappers of your own a list drop it in the comment section and let us know like what's the criteria and why do you have them in that list yeah. okay and also just the end of the show we're ending off the show on a very good note yeah. we are at a new venue Tatakula's Barber Shop make sure that you come through and get a haircut here and also just come and th check out what they what they have here it's a very nice environment the mm -hmm. aesthetics the ambiance is dope everything mm. is fine also shout out to Reynard Mahali he's the one that styled us for the for the show today and he's going to style us for the next yeah. few episodes so just expect a lot of big drip from us from now on yeah. um, i think like reynard is very it's well known a cold winter man uh, reynard is very well known in the industry he's a uh, you know a big fashion uh, fashion icon in the industry i feel like and everybody yeah. goes to him for styling so he was also in the newspapers a while back for some drama maybe we can also talk about oh, yeah. the fashion story one day in, but, the, yeah. in the future but yeah and let us future. know um you know what else we can do to add yeah. value to the show yeah. and keep on supporting the show like you did you been. mention the drip is you cotton, know, on. Of, cotton on yeah cotton i was on, i was yeah. getting to that okay. cotton on is of, of course the official clothing sponsor for the show so from now on yeah. if you also need yeah. like your yeah. chains your uh, accessories caps uh, shoes whatever go through to cotton house and actually bombard cotton them on. and get them oh cotton on yeah 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 and make sure that you actually um bombard them and get them to buy you know buy their stuff basically yeah. And with that, peace, peace out. Peace.